welcome back to the next module on fiscal and economic sense. Today I am going to talk about in this particular video, I am going to talk about cash flows and lifespan, very, very important topic. Let us get into the topic. Now, your cash flows are not going to be even. That means for the next 20 to 30 years, there will be time frame where you are like, you know, cash flow will start increasing. And after some point in time, what will happen is, as the age goes up, there is a possibility that your cash flow will come down because you will not be able to put in that much of effort. So, that means your annual income on the y-axis will start going up, the cash inflows will go up and then it will start going down. You will see there are three curves are there. For example, the first curve is on the blue color line. Let us talk about this blue color line. These are the people who start their career at a very early age, at the age of 20, right? Some people are touch wood like, you know, they start the career at early or even sportsman. Let us talk about sports person or let us talk about actors or professionals or like, you know, YouTubers. Let us talk about YouTubers and like, you know, social media people. They start early and then they start making money. But unfortunately, what happens is if you talk about a sports person, there are times where after 25, 27, 29 or even 30 or 40, they will not be able to make that much of money. So, what will happen is there will be their inflows will start coming down, correct? That is possible. On the other hand, people who join the IT industry, what happens is they start the career, like I am talking about this green color line, they will start the career and what will happen is they will start adding some more qualification. They will do some master's degree, they will do an MBA degree or whatever and as it goes up, like you know, the money will start going up and they will start the peak at the age of 45 to 50. Anywhere between 45 and 50, they will make the peak and after some point in time, the money will start, like you know, the inflows will start coming down because there will be some kind of like, you know, uh, situation where they have to come back, take care of the parents or take care of the family and all that stuff. For them, like, you know, at some point in time, money will become, uh, may not become the very primary thing, so that they may come down. And the third set of people is called uh, research scientists or professionals or doctors. So, what will happen is that is, they will, they will make more money. They will make more money only during the later ages. If you talk about doctors, right? Typically at the age of 55 to 65, they make a huge amount of money and sometimes they will work even till 70 and 75. So that means what happens is that is your portfolio, when, I, when you are building your portfolio, that means your financial portfolio, when you are building this, you will be making, you should know like, you know, which cycle you are belonging to. And, the, and more importantly, if you have a longer curve, you can take risks, okay? So, there are five important points or six important points you have to think about like when you talk about cash flows and lifespan. First thing is, you should know yourself, what it is, where you are, how, how you are, like how you are going to make the money and all that stuff. Next thing is, in the last session, we talked about investment options. If you have a longer investment horizon, you should be taking more risks because higher the risk, more the reward. You should not be investing in insurance policies, traditional insurance policies like whole life policy or like an endowment policy at an young age, not at all recommended. Why it's not recommended? Because it will drain away your cash. Similarly, at the age of 25, you should not be investing in a, a 3 BHK or a 4 BHK apartment. What will happen is most of your money will go into your apartment savings. Whereas in, this, in the case of 55, let us assume that you are in 55 or 50 or whatever, at that point in time, you can take like in that time, you might have some kind of health complications. So, you can look at like, you know, kind of whole life policies or endowment policies or selling your apartment. Those kind of things you can do it at a later stage, but not at an earlier stage. More importantly, do not put all the monies in one basket, including your business. For example, if you want to start an entrepreneur, do not put everything into that one single business, not, not, uh, not a good idea. So, I will be talking about it in a later video, but you should diversify. And more importantly, perfect timing is not at all possible. In today's world, perfect timing is not at all possible. Having said that, you will be able to like, you know, time your investments little accordingly based on situations. For example, COVID or pandemic situation. Let us assume that during the pandemic situation, for three to four months, the market was like you know, continuously going down. I would say that like, you know, if you are a long-term investor, maybe that is a good time like, you know, to invest in the market, right? 
So, timing is not always possible. Next year, they are talking about a recession in the US, right? If there is going to be a recession and your time horizon is 10 to 15 years, then you need not worry about like, you know, one year recession period because your time horizon is 15 to 20 years. And more importantly, like, you know, find out who is your advisor, the role of your advisor. What are the vested interests? More importantly, like, you know, don't go have the herd mentality because my friend made money, not necessary that you will be able to make money. So, you should know what are your cash flows, what are your life stages? What are the various options? I'll be talking about it, but I'm just building the basics as we move forward, right? And I've looked at a portfolio of, let's say, 2000 samples, 2000 to 2500 samples. What I've seen typically is that is those people who are less than 30 years, what would have happened is they would have got married. After marriage, they, what, what the parents will be saying is that is buy an apartment. So what will happen is they will buy one apartment and most of the money or most of their portfolio will, 65% of their portfolio will be only that one single real estate will be there, right? And they will be most of them 60 to 70% after IIT Madras, like you know, they will go and work for a company. What will happen is that is they will have provident fund. And they will put the money in the savings bank. They will not put it properly. So, money will be there in the savings bank. Savings bank gives you 4%. PF will give you some 8% or whatever, 7.98, 7 7.4, depending upon PPF or employee provident fund and all that stuff. Bank fixed deposits can give you 6%, 7% in a reputed bank. Okay. Apart from that, you get uh, lock your money in your insurance policies. And only 5% of the people are very smart. 5% of the people, what they do? They go for like you know, investing in other classes, other asset classes and all that stuff. Between 30 to 50 years, what happens is that is your apartment in your the portfolio of the in your portfolio, the apartment will come down, like you know, maybe 20, 25 percent will come down because your salary levels are increasing. What will happen is that is your, your other savings will take more importance. Your other savings will have and here you will start investing in mutual funds. You will start investing in direct equities. You should have. And above 50 years, what will happen is that is People will also invest in gold. Why? They would be having some daughters and all that stuff. They would have, they would like to get them married. Spouse will say like, you know, I would like to have a gold jewelry and all that stuff. So people also invest in gold, some part of it. And if you look at the apartment, apartment sizes come down. Whereas like, you know, people invest in mutual funds and others to the extent of 18%. Now what happens is that is, at the age of 50, they regret. They will say that, among all the asset classes, it is direct equities which has given you a huge amount of return, but I have learnt it very, very late. So, this is what I am going to cover. Like you, know, you would have seen the Warren Buffet case study earlier, where I talked about like you know, one of his biggest regret in life is he wanted to start early and participate in the equity markets. So, my suggestion is that is don't make the same mistake. So, when you are building a portfolio, have a diversified portfolio, a given allocation to equities. And if you can't manage equities, go through fund managers, professional fund managers, right? So, so those who are salary class go for a home loan of let's say 20 to 30 lakhs and 65% of their portfolio is locked in real estate. Not a very good sign, right? But today things are actually changing. Or people go and lock their money in retirement benefits, right? And more importantly, once in like, you know, I would say uh, once every uh, year, once a year, at least once a year, what you do is, Either you can do January to December, either you can do January to December or you can do April to March. January to December is called as calendar year. April to March is called as financial year. In India, we follow like, you know, mostly it is financial year because IT returns, tax returns, everything is filed once a year. My suggestion is that is, what are your cash inflows? You would have seen in my wealth mantra, I talked about cash inflows. It's called money coming to you. In what ways money will come to you, whether you are going to work for money or whether money is working for you. So, this is, I am talking about gifts and other things, whatever is going to come. The next one is, what are the cash outflows? What are the cash outflows is going to happen? Uh, like, you know, so you would have taken an EMI, like, you know, this I call it as debt, or you would have got a car, you would have got a bike. So, what are the cash outflows? How much you are going to spend for living expenses? What will be the money that you will be left out? So, the first thing that you should be talking about is something called a budget. The next thing is that is, at the end of every month, you should do an actuals. Is that right? And it's very important that you stay positive. If you inculcate these habits at the age of, let's say, 25 years or 20 years, and what will happen is, put it with the power of compounding, which we talked about in the earlier slide, like in a Warren Buffet and other people, even 100 rupees a day, 10 rupees a day, 50 rupees a day, if you're going to be able to save such money, using the power of compounding, you can become a multi-millionaire. You can have crores of rupees when you retire. 
So cash flows is very, very important. It's like your blood, like, you know, blood has to keep flowing. Similarly, cash flows has to go in one's life. So I was talking about health, wealth and relationship. When you talk about wealth, most important is cash flows. Thank you very much for listening to this module. This was a very short module. Let's, let's continue this in the next module. Thank you.